whirlwind. I can't help out. I'm going to probably run that song for you all. You remember, but you keep it up. Neighbors, yeah. so kind we get along with everyone. I thought, <laughs> I don't know who wrote that. <laughs> yeah. He lived in a different neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good song. I like it. Uh, beautiful song. Work I go, but to the Lord. I remember one time many years ago, I was singing this song, the church was, and I was standing at Reamer on the upper left hand side, and, and all at once hit me, as we say, like a ton of brick. I thought, where could I go but to the Lord? And I've been going to him all my life, and I was probably 30 years old at that time, 32 or something. I thought, what would I do if you took away that option? And uh, before you go away from the Lord, y'all would say, I'm going to take away the option of going to the Lord. I'm going to take away my option of prayer. I'm going to take away my option of helps. I'm going to take away my options of comfort. I thought, oh my goodness, where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. So I'm glad that 40 or more years past that, I still... No, where could I go but to the Lord? I don't want to give up those options of going to the Lord. Amen. So much. Book of Joshua, the seventh chapter. Again, very familiar to Scripture, and uh, as I always add, if, if you've been a Christian very long, all the Bible should be familiar. Uh, to you. You're not going to memorize the 31,000 or more verses, but this should be familiar. And uh, the Old Testament is full of living, actual, obviously, events. But it's designed to help us to understand the spiritual side. We have two distinct bodies as a Christian. You have the outward body of the flesh and has the inner man. And two distinct and you wouldn't be able to understand spiritual things without natural explanation. Uh, so we need these. Book of Joshua in the seventh chapter. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in their cursed thing, for Achan, the son of Carmire, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of their cursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Eli which is beside Beth Haven on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Eli. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Eli. <clears throat> and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. The few actually in Chapter 8, verse 5 is about 12,000. I, I see it said we don't need, you know, they're going to be outnumbered four to one, but that's okay, or, or whatever, more than that. So he said, so there went up thither a people of about 3,000 men, and they were fled before the men of Ai. And men of Ai spoke to them about 36 men. They chased them from before the gate in the Sheberim and smote them in the going down where for the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua was rent his clothes and fell on the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening time. He and the elders of Israel put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we have been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their back before their enemies? For the Canaanites and inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, and shall invite us around and cut us off, uh, uh, name from the earth, and what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore allowest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken the accursed thing, and have also stolen, dissembled also, and put it even among their own stuff. 
Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemy, but turned their backs before the enemy, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy their curse from among you. You may be seated and let us pray. <laughs> Lord, we thank you and we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your great grace, and thank you, Lord, for an on-purpose assembly. Lord, we thank you for those that say, well, they come out this morning, Lord, that we may come to do thy will, we may come to learn of thee and hear of thee and help others learn of thee, and we come to help and come to be helped. So, God, we pray you may be with all the parts of the service, God, whatever it may be, that it may always be about you, but God also about <coughs> helping one another. So we thank you and we love you. Praying for those sick and afflicted, praying for the request, God, that was spoken, a lot of needs. And God, we thank you. We serve a God that can feel every need. So God, we ask for your help. God, we ask for your help now that you may anoint physically, that we may preach the word of God in the strength of the place, but above all, no, he spiritually may preach thy word in the power of the Spirit, tying together the loose end, filling the void. We leave because of our inability and let thy word go out freely. So we thank you, we love you. Take the message and apply it to our hearts, Lord, that we may be strengthened and helped or corrected, whatever it may be. In thy name we pray, dear Jesus. Amen, amen. amen. From this, our uh, verse 7. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, Wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would to God we have been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. Kind of an odd statement. Now, we didn't find Moses making statements like this. Now, I'm not trying to be little Joshua. Anyway, he's bewildered. They finally go across Jordan. They completely win the battle of Jericho. God fought with them. God helped them. They're in their land of promise. Now they go and, and defeat us. How are we going to fight all the other people when we're defeated? So I understand his complete empty feeling. Now, he didn't want to go back to Egypt like the children of Israel always did. But he wanted to go back to the other side, Jordan, where God had parted the water when he stepped into the feet of the priest, touched in the water. And they crossed over on dry ground, the Jordan. And he crossed over, and the water was high at that time. It was higher than normal. I, I just always like that. It doesn't make any difference how high or how low God's able. And if you got real good shoes, and you try to cross a creek, you try to jump from rock to rock, well, at one time you used to. <laughs> Nowadays, it'd be a whole lot safer to just wave right through, except you young people, you still jump from rock to rock. <laughs> As old people, we try that, we're going to be wet all over and probably a broken hip. <laughs> or broken something, broken pride for sure. <laughs> so, they moved over. Now, he wants to go back to that side. Because what can we do? We're defeated. So what I want to preach on is on the wrong side of the promise. On the wrong side of the promise. Now I'm going to say something what we heard. And actually, I thought about it and, and I decided to look it up. And I realized it really hadn't been around for a long time. And I realized that, well, I was going to say it about Bible, but... We've all heard about God's unconditional love, but what you may not know is the word unconditional is not even in the Bible. And it has been proclaimed God's unconditional love. And by definition, sometimes you might be able to say that, but it's really, if you look up the history of it, it doesn't come from good things. <laughs> and unconditional love can imply something that is not true. So we begin to look at it. So, uh, uh, first of all, the, as I said, the word unconditional is not in the Bible. Second, God love for salvation and blessing are based on His conditions. 
His love for salvation and blessing are based on His condition. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. We have our own conditional love, people say, but actually, we really shouldn't say that, just to be quite honest. Not that people say it is wrong, because sometimes by definition they're saying one thing. But we have to realize that I think the world is taking that, that's why everybody's going to heaven, because of God's own conditional love. Everybody's not going to heaven. In fact, there's a whole lot less that's going to heaven and what there are that isn't. Amen. Because the Bible, uh, amen, uh, where there is, I mean, uh, amen. So uh, faith uh, and salvation uh, is based upon our, uh, salvation based upon our faith. Uh, the Bible said, by grace are you saved, uh, amen. But it doesn't stop there. Uh, it doesn't say by God's own conditional love you're saved. No, by God's grace you're saved through faith. It's based upon the condition of faith. Everything you do is based upon the condition of lining up with God's Word. It's always based on the condition of that. Amen. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. The Bible says that. He that overcome the shed inherit all things. The Bible says in Revelation 2 1. He that overcome the shed inherit all things. But the fearful and believe the hormone and the doctrine and all that shall have their part in the lake of fire. On conditional love of God, He will give you all things. Only He that overcometh. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Uh, and so we begin to see that. So, yes, God has a great love for mankind. Uh, he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But love doesn't mean that no matter what you do or how you live, He will take you to heaven. Amen. It doesn't mean whatever you do, whatever you live, on conditional love of God, say, well, they just did the best they can. On conditional love of God, say, well, you know, I just understand the unconditional love of God. It said, I don't want to catch in hell. There is no such thing. Everything based upon the condition that you accept Him. Now, in some cases, I can understand why people say that. They talk about he'll love you if you're a vile sinner. He'll love you if you're a drug addict. He'll love you if you fail many times. Yes, he will. The love possibility is there. The love out for you is there. But understand, the conditional love of God is there. You must accept. Amen. The only, the love of God said, I don't want anyone to perish. But the conditional love is, you must repent. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you look up the history of that before 1960, nobody preached about the phrase on conditional love of God. Nobody used that phrase. The phrase actually they was attributed to someone that is atheist on conditional love on different things. So we have to look at that. And I'm not on a soapbox about that, but we have to understand. I think the world is picking up the wrong idea. The on conditional is not even in the Bible. Huh? That phrase is not anywhere in the Bible. Everything in the Bible it tells us what we must do for what God huh, has to do. And I say all that because Joshua said, huh, how can we go? Let us go back to the other side. We can't understand. Huh? God's going to give them reason why they failed. The love of God brought them out of Egypt with great signs and wonders. The love of God rolled back the sea. The love of God had fed them in the wilderness for 40 years. The love of God had brought manna to them. The love of God had given them all the Ten Commandments, all the rules. The love of God had done many things. Amen. But those that refused to accept the promised land refused to believe that God was able to overcome the giant. That God said, you're not going. Yes, I established the nation. Uh, he sent down 70 souls. Joseph to begin with then 70 souls in Egypt. Uh, he built a nation in 430 years. Uh, he brought them out with great signs and wonders. Uh, but the, God's love for them was great. Uh, but then he said because of your own belief, you're not going from everyone from 40 years old and upward. 20 years old and upward. He said Jocelyn and Caleb because they believe. 
when you speak the unconditional love of God, you brought them out and say, well, people are people, they failed. I remember one time somebody said, uh, John or Crystal one had done something, whatever, and I told them, you know, they're going to straighten up and all that, and somebody did, I said, oh, they're just kids. And I immediately said, and if they want to see adulthood, they're listening to me. <laughs> I remember there was conditions there. Uh, amen. Uh, if they want to make it to adulthood, uh, they're going to uh, listen to what I say. Uh, amen. Uh, and so we see that. Uh, so never ever mistake, uh, estimate the power of the enemy. Uh, they said, I see the parents telling the kids, uh, okay, look at your kids. Y'all want to make it to adulthood? Okay, I'll move on. <laughs> you got to grin a little bit, Stacey. I'm just making a joke. Okay, just relax. We're not going to take you out back. <laughs> relax. So we see, uh, amen, never underestimate the power, uh, amen, of the enemy. Uh, uh, we say, oh, uh, we have the greater power. Uh, yes, we do, uh, but the condition of that, uh, and greater is he that's in you uh, than he that's in the world. Uh, but also, uh, as Gordon taught last week, he doesn't really want clean temples. Who no longer had the greater power. They immediately fought Jericho. He told them they followed God's steps exactly one time around and seven days, seven times. And before, uh, a man shout with a shout, blow the trumpet, and shout with a shout, and the walls will fall down. He said, now let me tell you something. Everything in Jericho belongs to God. Uh, there's nothing to be taken. Uh, everything in that city belongs to God. Uh, but Achan uh, uh, chose uh, to steal uh, a Babylonian garden away to go uh, and all this. Uh, and now... They fell. Now they fell. You still got the same God. You still got the same God of love. God's love never diminishes. God's love's like God. God's love's eternal. God's love uh, never diminishes. God never diminishes. Uh, if God would diminish uh, one uh, uh, one fraction uh, of a, a, a pound of force uh, in every uh, ten million years, he still he would not be eternal. Uh, if he only diminished uh, a, a fraction of a pound of force uh, in a million years, he would not be eternal. He never diminishes. He's eternal. Amen. Amen. So the Christian has a greater power. But that power is determined on that faith. We have the greater power, but that power is determined on our faith. It determined on our condition. Amen. Of trusting God with all thy heart, lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways of not in him, he shall direct the path. Yes, we have the promises and we have the greater power. I'll not suffer anything again when you're born, you're able to there. We have that power. Joshua didn't have that power, but because of sin. They lost. I always, somehow, I like the way, it, I guess it doesn't really sound like God. <laughs> and I don't know how it says, so it's, it's give me time here. So Joshua uh, prays, and the enemy shram, all that. And the Lord said to Joshua, and, and this has sounded different. Get thee up, for her a while, a lightness of one face. John, I don't want to hear anything else about it. Been laying there for hours. You've been laying there for hours. I uh, said we ought to be on the other side. And the Lord uh, just said, Joshua, get up. This is the way I see that. Get up. How come you're lying there on your face? Huh? You're lost because of the reason. Huh? There's a reason you lost. Huh? It's not my power that had diminished. Huh? It's not my abilities that diminished. Huh? It's not my promise that has diminished. Huh? It's your own sin. Your own sin. But Joshua wanted to go back on the other side of the promise. Not to Egypt. I think how often in a Christian life sometimes we don't live on the blessing side of the promise. Mm -hmm. We stay on the other side of Jordan. We, we go across to the land of Canaan where the land would flow with milk and honey. 
We tasted the goodness of the Lord. We tasted the blessings of God. But then battles come. The more, to put it in our terms, seem like the more you try to do for the Lord, the more you'll find battles against you. Amen. But the battle began to come. Now instead of the battles, and still I live you on this side of the promise. You said, well, I'm just going to back off. I'll go back on the other side of Jordan, not to Egypt. I'm not going back on the Lord, but I'm just going back off from, I'll get back on the other side of the promise. And I'm just speaking as a man, okay? I'm not trying to prove this completely, but I've seen people that back off from the promises of God, back off from the blessings of God. Back off on the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Huh? Amen. So his was defeated. Huh? They, 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 uh, before in number 13, huh? Moses said, uh, uh, go fly out the land, you know the story. Huh? And the ten brought back a bad report. They said, everything you said about it is true. Huh? Everything God said about it is true. Huh? It does flow with milk and honey. Huh? Here's the fruits of it. Huh? But there's giants in the land. Huh? Hey, huh? We can't do it. Huh? That God that just brought them out of Egypt. Uh, he, can't, uh, he can't overcome these giants. Yes, he can. Uh, hey, I don't want to live on the wrong side of the promise. Uh, I want to live in the blessings of the promise of God. I want to live in the blessings. Doesn't mean I'm not going to have battles. But in verse 10 and 12, 10 through 12, get the uh, verse of Israel of sin. They also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken their cursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also. They have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before the enemies, but turned their back before their enemies, because they were cursed. Neither will I be with you anymore. Wow. God said, you're never going to win another battle. Only if you do on your own, of course. You're not going. To, you're not going to conquer Canaan. You're not going to conquer the cities. You're not going to conquer the towns. You're not going to live in the land of promise. Amen. You're not going to do that. Except you occur the cursed thing among you. Many times we say, hey, whatever you put between you and God was zap the blessings that you have in your life. It will do away with your blessing if you're not willing to give up your life for the sake of God. Amen. It will zap everything. He says here, I'm not going to fight for you. I'm not going to be with you. I'm not going to win the battle. So Unless you get rid of what I told you not to take to begin with. And God still works in that way. So then Joshua realized and they begin to carry out the plan of God and the will of God. But at first, he said, well, we'll go back on the other side. We'll go back on the other side of the promise. So I don't want to live on the wrong side of the promise. So he didn't go back to Egypt. But he didn't see a way to live in the promise. I've seen, I'm going to speak as a person now. I've seen many people do this in Christian life. They didn't go back to Egypt, but they stopped living in the promise and the blessings. They stopped living in the feeling the blessings of God, <coughs> feeling the closeness of God. Amen. I want to feel that close. I want to be able to see a flower and get blessed. I want to be able to see the leaves in the spring come forth. The red bud, my favorite thing in the spring. They begin, the red buds, I absolutely, I look on the way up, I say, hey, I can see, it used to be in revivals in Jackson County or when I worked in Jackson County all those years. In this time of year, you can actually leave Charleston all the way to Ripley. You either saw a red bud or one that was in the Mirror. because they're along the interstate so easily they go there so well but I love, love them and I'll tell you this I told Jeremy and Elijah the other night I preached one time in Mason County it been a few years ago and I told them about it was about this time of year a little later I told them about the red buds how I love them and finally an older woman after church came up and said preacher said what in the world are red bugs that you like so well. <laughs> and she thought I sent bugs and the way I said it probably did sound like bugs. But I kept saying I love the red bugs. I said several times, what kind of red bugs 
do you like so well? <laughs> so I never forget that. I try not to preach at him as much. But I love him. I love being in the blessing of God. I love the feeling every year. I'm sure Sandy gets tired about the time because they come on and they just keep getting more colorful. Huh? Amen. They stay colorful until the other greenery huh, appears. Huh? And I love the beauty of God's creation. Huh? I never want to get over it. Huh? Hey, huh? I never want to get over the fall foliage colors huh? and God painting the picture. Huh? Brother Hebrew Woods huh? in the fall huh? in the revival. They usually say something like, God's painting you a picture out there now. <laughs> painting you a picture. Hey, I want to live on the right side of the promise. I want to make sure I get rid of anything that's between me and the right side of the promise because I know I have victory in Jesus. Mm, the Bible says in Luke 17, we're going to close. Uh, he said a little statement. He's talking about, and probably the way I interpret the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, you see, God had destroyed the first world uh, under Noah. Uh, they came suddenly uh, in Noah, the rain come. Uh, he destroyed the world by water. Uh, he had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah uh, by fire and brimstone. Uh, now he's going to destroy the Jews uh, by the Roman army. Uh, a few years down the road, about 40 years uh, uh, past his his ministry. Huh? He's going to destroy the Jews. Huh? A law in the way they were. Huh? And the temple huh? not by fire and water. Huh? Not by fire and brimstone. Huh? But he's going to destroy it with the Roman army. Huh? Uh, and he's going to come in and destroy the temple. Huh? No, huh? And he said when you see these things, you need to escape. He says the same thing in Luke. Huh? Uh, when you begin to speak about in Luke 21, you need to escape. Huh? And he's talking about it in Luke 17 also. Huh? And he's talking about don't look back, don't go back. There's been a long time. Uh, people have lost their lives in a house fire because they went back to get something that wasn't so important. And I, I can understand you want that picture or that gun your grandfather gave me. Or... Now, sometimes you lose life, and of course, you're all farming, and you lose life because you go back to try to get a child and all of that. You, it, obviously understandable but sometimes lost lives are lost because of things that don't really matter and if you put that spiritually a lot of time people lose their life and lose their blessings because they want to hold on to something of something that really doesn't matter so he said that to lost wife said remember in the middle of that he says to them, remember Lot's wife. She came out of Sodom. Now, we always have to guess at what happened because the angel said, got them and they tarried and they brought them out, sent them out and they said, now flee to the mountain. Oh, they said, but don't look back. And Lot's wife looked back. And we have to say, well, things like she came out of Sodom, but Sodom didn't come out of her. We don't know. But she hadn't looked back with something that wasn't pleasing to God. She hadn't looked back for the judgments of God to fall. She hadn't looked back direct to give the commandment of God. It was more than just a courtesy. Huh? Of the explosion or a flash of light would draw your attention. It had to be looking back with desire. It had to be uh, looking back not wanting to leave the things uh, in law. Understood she had to leave everything. I feel so much. Now what is like four million people have left Ukraine? Something. Something like that. And it breaks my heart. Everything they got now is in one suitcase. Mm -hmm. They were people just like you and I. Mm -hmm. How do you like to leave your country with what you can pack in one suitcase for your life? <laughs> my heart breaks for that. Hey Amen. I don't know why she looked back, but obviously she looked back for the wrong reasons. Huh? And God brought judgment. Huh? Amen. Huh? She looked back huh? in a place that was sinful, a huh? place that God was going to destroy, huh? a place where uh, uh, the daughter and son in law uh, uh, mocked uh, law as a, as a foolish one. Huh? Amen. Huh? Looked back. Huh? And they said the same thing. One thing I like about when they lock them in, huh? when you talk about doing something wrong, they said it's the same thing to say that. Who are you to come in here and tell us what's wrong? Who are you to judge? People love to make that statement. 
love to make that statement. But I don't want to live on the wrong side of the promise. I want to live on the right side. Fight the battle. If there's something in my life that's making me lose, it's not God that's losing. <laughs> it's something in my life, you know, that's making me lose. I, I can lose in the power of God. Paul lost his head, but he glorified God. Amen. Pray to them, put in prison, they glorify God. But I don't want to lose spiritually. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and we love you. Pray, God, you may take these words and apply them to our hearts. God, that we may always live on the right side of the promise, that we may not desire to go back because of defeat. That we may realize, God said, Look, you keep this sin in your life, and I'll forsake you. I'll leave you. And God, that we may realize that we need to get rid of those things that would bring defeat. We want to live on the other side of Jordan where the land of Canaan was. And God, where the land flow with milk and honey. We want to do that spiritually, live in the land that flows with milk and honey spiritually. So in thy name we pray, amen. amen.